This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and most battle strategies in the world of Pokemon battling tend to be pretty straightforward. Do enough damage to the enemy Pokemon via the use of setting up or type advantages before they can do enough damage to you. But in today's video, I wanted to highlight some of the more creative and even somewhat wacky battle strategies out there that are actually good enough to work. They'll all be double battle strategies because the capability of having your two Pokemon interact with each other rather than just the enemy Pokemon opens up the door for a lot more options. Also, it's the official competitive format. I'm limiting the strategies to ones that can be carried out in Sword and Shield, so you can try them out yourself if you want to. Also, I should give a shout out to Wolfie VGC, who I got several of these strategies from. So go check out his channel, he's fantastic. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel so I can hit that big 1 million sub mark soon. And let's dive in with the first strategy, number one, Surf and Colossal. Well, technically it doesn't have to be Surf, but it's your best option and I will explain why. This strategy works by taking advantage of Colossal's signature ability, Steam Engine. If it's hit by a fire or water type move, its speed raises drastically, which means by six stages. If it's starting from neutral speed, that means it instantly goes to four times speed, which is the maximum. Side note, Steam Engine also makes eggs hatch faster, just like Flame Body and Magma Armor do. So I figured I should share that because I feel like a lot of people don't know that. So now you know, because it's my super short show. If any of you get that reference, I will be very impressed. Anyways, Steam Engine is hard to make use of in a single battle situation because you're entirely dependent on the actions of your opponent. However, in a double battle situation, if you intentionally attack your own Colossal with a fire or water type move, you can turn this very slow Pokemon that only has like base 30 speed into potentially the fastest Pokemon on the field. This is even more powerful now than it would have been in previous generations because speed changes happen immediately rather than at the end of a turn like they used to. For example, if Colossal had been introduced in generation seven, that maximum speed stat it gets from Steam Engine wouldn't be used to determine the movement order until the following turn which means on that first turn, it's probably still moving last because it's really slow, leaving it vulnerable to attacks. But now that speed stat happens immediately. So if your partner Pokemon moves first, then Colossal is almost certainly moving second because that speed stat change happens right then and there. There are of course multiple ways to carry out this strategy. Any direct water or fire type attack just aimed onto Colossal will activate Steam Engine. However, I personally feel that moves that hit all Pokemon on the field, those being Lava Plume and Surf are better here because you can simultaneously activate Steam Engine and do some damage to the opponents. At first glance, it seems like Lava Plume would be the better option here because Colossal is not weak to fire, but it's four times weak to water. Therefore, intentionally using a water type move on your own Pokemon that's four times weak to it seems like it could be pretty dangerous. However, Surf is actually the better move in this situation because of the item Weakness Policy. If a Pokemon holding a Weakness Policy is hit by a super effective attack that doesn't knock it out, obviously, then the Weakness Policy will be consumed and it gets plus two to both its attack and special attack. If the stats started at neutral, that means that they double. This means that with just one usage of Surf, you are getting your Colossal to plus six speed and plus two to both its attack and special attack instantly. Although you're probably just gonna utilize the special side because while it has equal base attack and special attack, its special move pool is much wider. So the idea is to have a really fast Pokemon with Surf move first, and then hit a likely Dynamaxed Colossal because you would Dynamax it to decrease the damage done to it from the Surf. Then you use your super fast beefed up Colossal to just sweep through the enemy team. As for which Surf user to use, it's best to use a really fast Pokemon so that it will move before your opponent's Pokemon and then have one that has really low special attack and ideally isn't a water type so it doesn't get the stab boost. 
That way you can boost up your Colossal while minimizing the necessary damage to it. Weavile is the most popular and probably the best Surf Colossal partner here, but some other decent options are Linoon, Haxorus, and Dragapult. I think Dragapult hits a bit too hard on the special side for my taste, but it's not Stab and it's super fast, so it would work decently. The next strategy is another one that features a brand new Generation 8 Pokemon, that being number two, Eldegoss and Contrary. Eldegoss has a brand new ability called Cotton Down. Whenever Eldegoss is hit with an attack, it scatters cotton spores all around it, lowering the speed stat of every surrounding Pokemon by one stage, including its own ally. Now at first this ability doesn't seem like it would be that good, because while you are lowering the speed of your opposing Pokemon, you're also lowering the speed of your partner Pokemon and it's rare that you would want to do that. It seems like the only situations Cotton Down would be good is if you pair it with a Pokemon whose stats can't be lowered, like Clear Body Dragapult, or if it's used on a Trick Room team. However, there's another strategy you can use with Cotton Down, and that's by pairing it with a Pokemon who has Contrary. Contrary is an ability that inverses all of the stat changes the Pokemon would normally experience. So if an enemy Pokemon intimidates it, its attack goes up by one stage rather than down, but if the Contrary Pokemon uses Sword Stance, its attack drops by two stages. This ability can lead to some pretty fun strategies, like using Leaf Storm on a Contrary Superior and giving yourself a special attack boost every time you attack, rather than a special attack drop. Or you can use Shell Smash on a Shuckle and lower its attack and speed, which are already terrible, but you boost its defenses so it takes even less damage. But Contrary also pairs really well with Cotton Down, because while Cotton Down will drop the speed of your enemy Pokemon, it will boost the speed of the Contrary Pokemon. Unfortunately for this strategy, only two Pokemon with Contrary made it into Sword and Shield. The first of them is Shuckle, which doesn't really benefit from the speed raising because it's slower than, well, nothing actually. It's tied with Pukumuku and Munchlax for the lowest base speed stat in the entire game. But the other is Malamar, which actually really benefits from this strategy because its speed is only middle of the road. So you can really improve it via the use of Cotton Down and Contrary. Then you just start firing off superpowers which boost its attack and defense each time it uses it instead of dropping them, and then you can punch some serious holes in your enemy team. Speaking of Malamar, the next strategy can also feature it. That being number three, a stat dropping move and Topsy Turvy. If you've never heard of the move Topsy Turvy, I wouldn't be surprised. Prior to Sword and Shield, there were only two whole Pokemon that could get it, Inkay and Malamar. However, Generation 8 introduced a new Pokemon that also gets it, that Pokemon being Grappaloct, which is my favorite of the Gen 8 Pokemon, it's so good. Now it can do Topsy-Turvy too. How Topsy-Turvy works is that it inverts the stat changes of the target. So all boosts become drops and all drops become boosts. This strategy has a lot of potential to completely shut down any seriously boosted enemy Pokemon like if one got off a belly drum, you change plus six attack into minus six attack, which then makes it completely useless. But Topsy Turvy can also be used on ally Pokemon and therefore change the negative impacts of moves into positive ones. For example, think of all the really powerful special attacks that then drop the user's special attack by two stages in exchange. So those would be Leaf Storm, Overheat, Draco Meteor, Floor Cannon, and Psycho Boost, but the last two don't really matter because they're only on legends that are not in Sword and Shield. So what you can do is fire off one of these attacks and then have your special attack drop, but then in the same turn, your slower topsy-turvy Pokemon changes that stat drop into a boost. So it's effectively a way to create a contrary superior Leaf Storm situation but on any Pokemon, regardless of its ability. This strategy can be used with any move that drops the user's stats, some of the better ones being Close Combat, Hammer Arm, or Super Power. So that's really awesome because it turns detriments into benefits. I haven't seen it used a whole lot in the battles that I've done, 
but I think it has potential to really catch people off guard. Next up is a strategy that if you've played any amount of ranked online doubles, you've probably encountered at least once due to Alpha Rad and Wolfie VGC popularizing it. That being number four, beat up justified. You could also call it justified beat up, but then that sounds too much like it's a warranted mugging. Justified is an ability that boosts the Pokemon's physical attack by one stage every time it's hit with a dark type move. So of course you could just target your justified Pokemon with a dark type move to give it plus one to its physical attack. You could even utilize the move Brutal Swing, which hits all other Pokemon on the field so you can get that attack boost and hurt the enemy Pokemon. But the move Beat Up specifically is far superior to any other dark type move for this purpose because it can hit more than once and each individual hit activates Justified. Therefore, you can give your Justified Pokemon a ton of physical attack boosts just with one use of Beat Up. The number of times Beat Up hits depends on the number of not fainted party members that also do not have a non-volatile status condition like Poison or Paralysis. Therefore, if you're doing a VGC or ranked doubles battle and you use Beat Up immediately before either of the enemy Pokemon can KO yours, Beat Up will hit the Justified Pokemon four times, resulting in plus four physical attack, which translates to tripling it, assuming it started from neutral. Then you just proceed to use that super beefed up Justified Pokemon to crush the enemy team. As of writing this video, the only fully evolved Pokemon that have Justified are Lucario, Arcanine, and Gallade, with Lucario and Arcanine being the most popular users of it. Absol also gets Justified, but is not in Sword and Shield, and the Swords of Justice, the ones who inspired this ability and have it just normally, also have the ability, of course, and while they will be able to be transferred into Sword and Shield once Pokemon Home comes out, well, they're not gonna be legal in VGC 2020. As for which Pokemon can use Beat Up, there's actually quite a lot, but Whimsicott tends to be the most popular user of it because it doesn't get stabbed from the move, so it won't do too much damage to the justified Pokemon, and also it can be used for a lot of other really useful purposes, like Tailwind, for example, or Helping Hand. And the final strategy is another one that Wolfie VGC popularized, and it's widely known as the ultimate Dynamax counter. But it can be used for other purposes as well. That being number five, Trick Eject Button. The first part of this strategy is the move Trick, which swaps the held items of the user and the target. There are actually quite a lot of strategies that utilize Trick, but they mainly focus on giving an enemy Pokemon an item that it does not want like a toxic orb or a lagging tail or a choice item onto a Pokemon that needs all of its moves in order to be able to execute its strategy. Also, I should mention there's another move which does the exact same thing called switcheroo. And while it can also be used for this strategy, I'm gonna mainly talk about trick simply because it's one syllable versus three. The other part of this strategy is the item called the eject button which is a held item that causes the Pokemon to switch out whenever it is hit by an attack and it's single use. There are multiple strategies out there involving the eject button, but I'm not gonna be going into them. I'm just talking about this specific purpose. How the strategy works is that you have a Pokemon that's holding the eject button, use trick or switcheroo on an enemy Pokemon, therefore giving it the item. Then your second Pokemon attacks that Pokemon that is now holding the eject button forcing it to switch out immediately. This works best if the trick or switcheroo Pokemon has the ability Prankster so that it can give the eject button to the enemy Pokemon first. Then the ideally the second Pokemon also uses a priority move, but it's slower than the Prankster Pokemon, so it moves second. If executed properly, you can force a Pokemon to switch out before it even has the chance to attack which both prevents them from attacking you that turn, but can also get rid of some boosts that they have. Now, some of you may be thinking that this super gimmicky strategy seems like a lot more work and a lot less effective than just using a move that forces switch outs, like Dragon Tail, Circle Throw, Roar, or Whirlwind. Now, while those moves do work, they have negative priority. So you can't use them to force a Pokemon to switch out before they have the chance to attack. 
Additionally, the trick eject button strategy works on Dynamax Pokemon, while these other moves do not. Dragon Tail loses its secondary effect, and Circle Throw, Roar, and Whirlwind just don't work on Dynamax Pokemon at all. The moves just fail. It's important that this strategy work on Dynamax Pokemon, because if you switch a Dynamax Pokemon out, it returns to normal. And then when it comes back in, they can't Dynamax again. You make the opponent use up their Dynamax for basically nothing, which is why the strategy is called the ultimate Dynamax counter. Many of you probably saw the clip of Wolfie pulling this strategy off that went really viral, and he accomplished it in his game by using Prankster Trick on a Grimmsnarl and Quick Attack on a Sylveon. It was incredible. Now I must admit of all the strategies we've discussed in this video, this one is probably the least practical because it requires a hell of a lot of prediction just for the impact of switching a Pokemon out. However, I wanted to talk about it because it can work as we've seen and I also think it's hilarious. Before I wrap up the video, I wanna take a minute to thank the sponsor for this video, Skillshare, an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. Make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. It empowers you to accomplish your goals by offering all sorts of classes designed for real life so you can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. It's also extremely affordable, way cheaper than in-person classes or workshops. If you've ever wanted to be a YouTuber or other kind of online influencer, then I recommend the course Going Viral, Write, Film, and Make Content That People Share by Matt Belisai, who is a very successful comedian, writer, and social media star. This all-encompassing class teaches you how to make online content, whether it's a YouTube video or tweet or anything else that people want to share. It teaches you tactics for writing great content while still being original and reliable. If you have any interest in an online media career, this is the course for you. Skillshare is giving away two free months of their premium membership if you click my link in the description below. Then after that, it's only 10 bucks a month, which is super reasonable for all the stuff you're getting in exchange. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and a special thanks to my patrons who are supporting me over on Patreon, giving me a reliable source of income independent from the fluctuating YouTube ad revenue. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend this video here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all.